today we're going to be creating a quick VJ loop and this tutorial will cover some things like simple deform modifier, wireframing, adding in some lights, having it parent to an object and a lot of other fun things. So stick around and let's dive on in. First things first, let's go ahead and delete our camera and our light. We can go ahead and use default cube here. Let's just press N to pop open our little transform tab. Let's drag this up a little bit. We're going to go ahead and make the dimensions of the Y 8. And let's go ahead and make our X and Z about 4 meters. Let's press tab to enter edit mode. Select our faces of the rectangle. Essentially, it's these two sides that are the most vertical. Go ahead and enter edit mode once again. Vertex, subdivide it a few times. Let's make it let's subdivide a few more times. Press A, make it nice and smooth. The next step we're gonna do here is add in an empty. I'm gonna go ahead and do plane axis. Take your empty, grab it. I like to bring it up to the center of the rectangle. Press G and Y. Now what you're gonna do here is and add a new modifier on call it simple deform. Go to bend on the mm, let's do it on the Z axis. Let's do it on the Z axis and see how that is. Or maybe the X. This is one of those things where you play with it, you know? Let's do about negative negative twenty. And since we're not really going a destructive way, we can play around with this later on. So you're first going to add the bend deform, and you're going to add another simple deform here. And this one's going to be twist on the y-axis, and then we're going to go ahead and grab our empty. Oh, looks like we can do that with here. So now you can kind of see here we have this twisting kind of shape. Let's twist it a little bit more. I want to give it a nice little, about 180 and make it perfect. And then, once we have that set and done, I'm going to add a mirror modifier. And the mirror modifier is also going to use that empty. We're going to make that on the Y axis. And you're going to see right now, it's not really connecting. What you can do is go over by merge. And if you hold down shift, you want to do it very subtly. You want it to merge. We don't want to leave too much empty space, but we don't also want to have space inside. So I'm going to guess it's about 0 0.2 meters. You can kind of see. So now we have our base kind of like twisting shape. The next steps we have to do is add in our camera. So press tilde front and in a camera. Let's bring the camera up a little bit. Now what we're going to do here, open up another work kind of slot to view the camera so we can see. Now we're going to make our animation really quickly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the camera backwards in this animation, not forwards, just because well, let's like to switch things up here. So within our location tab, we're going to keyframe. I like to do a single keyframe. Shift and right, uh, the right uh, arrow makes you jump in between. I believe now you have eight. Uh, insert another keyframe. Now you'll see we have our loop kind of just like pulling back. Let's go ahead and take our, our cube, press M to create a new collection. Let's call it loop. Take our loop, shift A, collection instance, bring the loop back in. Let's go ahead and just duplicate it, bring it right around there. Shift D, make sure they're on the Y axis, hold control down. Now, what you're going to do is just shift R a few times, moving backwards. Let's do the same thing with the other side too while we're at it. So let's go ahead and not select our original looping object. Shift D, Y, let's move it up. Then we have to duplicate one more time. And make sure it's right there. And you can do Shift R a few more times. There we go. Now if we look at it, 
we have a bit more of an animation. I'm gonna tinker with it a little bit towards the end of this, but next thing is our lighting and our materials. So let's go ahead and cut this horizontal split once again. And let's switch this over to our shader editor. And let's open this and render it. Let's go over to our camera. Let's make our loop. Let's color it so you can kind of see. Let's go to our camera. Let's just go ahead and turn on some composition guides so we can see what's going on here. Now, let's go ahead and select our original cube here. Let's bump up the metallic, turn down the roughness. Let's go into our environment, bring this down. Within our render settings, we're gonna go turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space, reflections. We got the whole nine yards going on here now. So what I like to do, what I did in my original, is I brought in a light bulb within the loop area. So I'm gonna select the wireframe so we can see that light bulb. You see our camera's right there. Just bring it over a little bit. Let's up the light. Make it about 200. Well, we could do about 500. Let's do about 300. Really at this point, it's kind of up to you. I'm gonna put it right about there. So if you look, right now it's moving kind of slow. I like to do with the camera is if you up the perspective, you can kind of make it move a little bit faster. But it looks right now we're having a little bit of a tricky situation. So what I like to also do, let's go ahead and look at our animation, right? So right now we have it zero to negative eight. This is zero to negative 16. Play a single keyframe. Now let's move in a tad bit different. We have a light bulb in each of these. Let's double check our loop. So it looks like it's working. Let's head on over to our light bulb. Let's upgrade it by 500. Let's take our original looping cube. Shade smooth. All right, all right. It's looking different now. What I also like to do at this point, bump, connect our normal to Voronoi texture. Connect our color to our height, not the scale. I believe it's distance. Yes, distance. There we go. Mm, let's do Manhattan. Chevy Chev. The one important thing I realized we didn't do was. Let's go ahead and take our original cube loop and we forgot to rotate it. So insert, oops, insert single keyframe 360 to that. You can see now we have our, our rotation. We got an animation going on here now. So one of the other steps I did not do was let's up the scale here. Let's go ahead and duplicate our cube. And what we're gonna do here is turn, press that. We don't want the same. Let's make it a little bit tinier. Let's go ahead and create a wireframe modifier. You can kind of see here. And then we're gonna turn that thickness down a bit. And let's go in. Here's where things will get a little tricky. Then the wireframe modifier. We're gonna go ahead and let's just turn off our cube real quick so we can just see the wireframe. Frame tab, push Ctrl G, 
down here a little bit. I want it to match up. Let's do the same thing with this other side. Hold Alt and click. All right, to the line. Let's make sure we have it right to the line. This one's a bit of a tricky one sometimes. And honestly, it's looking like it's kind of matching up. Now what we're gonna do is the last finishing kind of touch, last two finishing touches, it's gonna go ahead and jump back into our wireframe, create a new uh, material, delete the principal BSDF, add in an emission, let's connect that surface, make it about like five. It's looking a bit bright, yes, I know. What you can do if you want this wire to be a little skinnier, just bring it down a little bit. You just click play so you can see what's going on. Now, if you want that tad bit of color to go on here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and spawn in another light point. Bring it up. Let's go ahead and Let's, let's go ahead and make that color uh, something that we can easily see because right now it's kind of difficult to tell where that color is at. So let's bring it right around. Bring it right around there. And then we're going to have this light essentially not in the loop because it looks like I just made that mistake. Bring it out into the collection. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna parent it to the camera. So it just kind of follows the camera. So we get this little bit of like this like playful light that goes along with it. So select the point light first, select the camera second, press control P, connect it to the object. And now you can see as our light kind of moves with us, you get this bit of like a blue kind of light coming alongside as well. And Let's just double check what's going on here. You can make this any color. You can make it change as it goes. Soft blue is kind of nice. Let's go back into our wireframe really quickly here. We can pull down a little bit. Let's go into our regular cube. Let's bring a little bit of roughness into the equation. We get a bit metallic. And I think we have our render pretty much. So to recap, essentially what we have here is we have a looping cube. We took a cube, modified it, added some deforms, then we essentially duplicated it, mirrored it, put in a wireframe, put in some lights, and then we have a looping structure. And one thing to check to see if it's looping, go to the zero frame and go to the last frame. If it matches, then you have a loop. Thank you once again. I hope that this tutorial did you well. I'm gonna try my best to clean these up and make it as short as I can, but nonetheless, a million thanks, and I hope to see you again in the future.